Tonight on SUTV News, state school students head to Harrisburg. And Ships Chess Club goes international. All that and more coming up right now. Thanks for joining us on SUTV News. I'm Avery Quinn. And I'm Holly Harrow. Students and faculty from the 14 Pashi schools met in Harrisburg this week. SUTV's Brendan Leahy was there. State capital in Harrisburg, but inside, students and faculty were making themselves heard over the funding cuts to Pennsylvania's state schools. The United We Stand, Unfunded We Fail rally was organized by APSCUF, the union representing the educators and coaches of all Pashi schools. Supporters packed the Capitol with signs, stories, and one clear message for lawmakers. State schools need more funding, and without it, schools will have to turn to other sources. The institutions, the universities needed to find some way to raise additional money. And I would say uh, desperation uh, caused them to pursue this per credit tuition model. An increase in tuition rates would make it harder for students to afford college, a burden some students already feel. Shippensburg student K. Sean Fitzgerald called on students to act with their vote and help elect government officials willing to fund state schools. We need to do this as quick as we can. Um, and I'm not saying, you know, the British are coming, but I am saying we can't complain if we don't do anything. And um, it starts with us. Governor Tom Wolf plans to implement a 5% increase in funding to state schools over the next two years. Reporting for SUTV News, I'm Brendan Leahy. Governor Wolf encourages both Republicans and Democrats to support the funding increase. Make plans for next Thursday night and stop by a poetry reading. Ship's own Dr. Santa Lucia, an award-winning author, will read from her new book, Because I Did Not Die. Her poems tell of Italian heritage, addiction, and relationships. The book and signing is next Thursday in, at 6.30 in Cora Grove Spiritual Center. You may have noticed the bottom floor of the library has a bit of a new look since returning from winter break. Jamison Barker went over to find out more. The bottom floor of the Ezra Lehman Library underwent some renovations over this winter break. The reimagined look includes some new technology and a lot more room for students to study. So we have a taller sided group study spaces that are more private to create more of a study room atmosphere and each of those five spaces have whiteboards that are installed inside of them. They're going to have uh, monitors that students can plug their computers into so that they can see what they're working on as a group um, and electrical you know plugs and things so that they can work in those the renovation process was a collaborative effort between students and contractors to get the job done. So we spent about, basically about a year working with uh, our student senate advisory group and uh, other student volunteers to go through and evaluate how the space could best be used and what the students needed out of the space. Also included in the renovations was the addition of a color printer. So a lot of students work in the library, they're working in groups, they're doing projects and presentations, and so there is color printing on campus, and they could certainly go over to media services and have things printed out, but a lot of times they just didn't want to have to travel somewhere else if they were doing the work here. They thought it would be nice if they could print things right here in this building. For SUTV News, I'm Jamison Barker. You can stop by the library help desk for more information on the technology. Every two seconds, someone in the U.S. needs blood. You can help by giving blood. The Health Sciences Club is hosting a blood drive in the Cub NPR next Thursday from 10 to 4, and anyone can donate. Be sure to drink plenty of fluids beforehand. Ship students don't just study abroad, they play abroad. Julie Ratcliffe went in search of the chess club's next moves after a European tournament. While most students spent their winter break relaxing, the Shippensburg University chess team went international. It took a lot of negotiating back and forth to, to plan the chip, but uh, we settled on this tournament, an open tournament in Budapest called the Perigny Open. Dr. Kennedy, the club's academic advisor, and members met and played with some of the best players in the world. 
we were in over our heads a little bit because the Hungarians are very good chess players. The, the average American player is the bottom of the barrel over there. Jacob Painter is the chess club's treasure. He's been a member since he stepped foot on this campus and competing in tournaments all over the East Coast. But the team's success abroad opened his eyes to a whole new world of the game. Just getting to meet the people at the tournament, that was one of my favorite things. All the people there were really nice. Sometimes they couldn't speak very much English, but they could still find ways to communicate. The club heads to the PA State Championships next month, but they are setting their sights on some more international fame in the future. And we've tossed around places like Iceland, New Zealand, Gibraltar. Those are some of the ones that have been on the drawing board. While the team preps for the next match, it's all about practice, practice, practice. From Budapest to Shippensburg, the chess team strives for mastery. Checkmate. For SUTV News, I'm Julie Ratcliffe. The chess club is always accepting new members. For more information about how to join, visit SUTVNews.com, keyword chess club. When we come back, find out what's new in this week's edition of The Slate. And get the latest on Australia's sea turtles in world news. Up next, a fatal train wreck miles from a small town in Germany. And did the Zika virus stop the Brazilians from celebrating Carnival? We have the details in world news. A head-on train collision outside Bad Abeling, Germany Tuesday killed nine people and left at least 50 others in serious condition. Just after 7 a.m., two passenger trains struck each other, traveling an estimated 62 miles per hour. Witnesses said it looked as though the trains had been fused together. The Zika virus has not dampened the spirits of Brazilians celebrating Carnival. More than a million people partied in the streets of Rio and other Brazilian cities on Sunday. Authorities have stressed the importance of avoiding mosquito bites, and the World Health Organization has declared a public health emergency over the Zika virus. And on a lighter note, a newly hatched albino sea turtle treated visitors of Australia's Queensland Beach this week. According to an expert with the Threatened Species Unit in Queensland, albino hatchlings occur once in several hundred thousand eggs. The baby sea turtle was the last of its 122 brothers and sisters to make its way into the water. That's it for this week's World News. I'm Marshall Keeley. For everything from sleep deprivation to the Super Bowl, Here's this week's Slate Preview. News covers forum on science and religion, ship life explores sleep deprivation, sports has softball season preview, opinion weighs in on Cam Newton's Super Bowl reaction, and lastly in entertainment has a new Deadpool movie review. Keep up all week at theslateonline.com. When we come back, if you have no plans for Valentine's Day, APB has you covered. And also see what book has muggles buzzing. It seems like every time I turn around, we're getting more and more snow. I think we had a little bit this morning. Uh, honestly, I'm getting tired of like just walking out in the morning and feeling that cold air. I know, me too. Well, here's Bailey with this week's forecast. Spring might be around the corner, but not for at least another week. Tonight, clear skies with a low of 11 degrees. Tomorrow, mostly cloudy skies with a small chance of flurries at night and a high of 30. In the five day, for Saturday and Sunday, partly cloudy skies with temperatures in the mid-teens. To start off your week, expect cloudy skies on Monday with a high of 29 degrees. Later that night, a 90% chance of snow. Tuesday and Wednesday, temperatures rise to the low 40s with a high chance of freezing rain in the afternoon. Expect morning snow showers on Wednesday. And that's your forecast. A new year means new shows. The Lurs Performing Arts Center has an exciting lineup for the spring that is sure to bring the crowds. A magician coming next uh, week. Uh, Jack Hanna will be here in a couple of weeks. Um, and the Peking Acrobats, the Yamada Drummers of Japan. Uh, we added our summer music festival in July for three weeks. We have uh, Neil Sedaka here on April 23rd. So there's really something for everyone here. We've also added the Raleigh Ringers that an outside group is going to be sponsoring in the end of June. Jack Hanna's Into the Wild event will be held next Friday starting at 7.30 p.m. Ticket prices are as low as $23. Whether you're single or taken, come out and join the Valentine's Day Bingo at Cub NPR starting tonight at 8. You'll have a chance to win tons of prizes worth over $1,500.
Music's big night is this Monday, and musicians are honoring a legend. Current and former members of the Eagles, along with Jackson Brown, are honoring Glenn Frey at the Grammys. Frey passed away January 18th at 67 years old. He was known for writing the Eagles hit, Take It Easy. Family troubles are brewing in the Harry Potter universe. A new book by J.K. Rowling is flying onto shelves on July 31st. Before you get in line at the nearest Barnes and Nobles, know that Harry Potter and the Cursed Child is a play. The book is published script of the stage play, not a new novel. We last left Harry Potter series in 2007 when Deathly's Hollows was published. Now Harry is back for another round of magic, struggling with his own son. Harry Potter and the Cursed Child picks up after the last scene in the last film. The play will debut this summer in London. That's it for your entertainment news. When we come back in sports, Morgan Griffith joined the 1000 Career Point Club. And also find out who was awarded the Jane Goss Perseverance Award at Wednesday night's basketball game. Morgan Griffith recorded her 1,000th career point last Saturday against Kutztown. Ryan Cho has the details. Morgan Griffith tied her single game career high of 27 points against Kutztown. She recorded her 1,000th point in the second quarter of the game. Definitely an honor, especially as a junior. I never expected to get it as a junior. Um, I was hoping to get it as a senior, but I'm glad it worked out this way. Um, it's definitely an honor to be with, involved with the names that are only the other 19 in history that got it. Um, it's definitely a huge honor. I'm definitely proud of myself. Griffith is now the 20th player in Raiders history that reached 1,000 career points. Coach Turn is very pleased. Well, I'm really proud for her. Um, I know that's always a goal of, of most basketball players uh, is that 1,000th career point. And I'm proud of her that she had the ability to get that in her junior year. And she certainly joined uh, an elite group of players uh, that have played here at Shippensburg. Um, so I, it makes me feel proud that they're able to achieve uh, the goals that they set for themselves. With three games left in the season, Griffith and the Raiders look to finish the season strong as they fight for a top two seed. We're definitely aiming for first or second. Um, we want that bye. We want as much time to rest up, um, as much time as we can to prepare for whoever we're going to get. Um, I mean, a, a home game without a bye wouldn't be too bad, but we're definitely pushing for the first round bye. Ryan Cho, SUTV Sports. Coming off the road, men's and women's basketball faced Millersville last night. Bernadette Koff has the recap. The women came out strong, leading by seven in the first minute. Millersville fought back, gaining the lead by eight at halftime. Millersville bench played a major role with 29 points. Ship's offense couldn't come back in the second half, losing the game 50-63. to For the men, Ship started hot up by 10 in the middle of the first half, but Millersville quickly came back. Ship never let up, its offense exploding in the second half, winning the game 87-70. to For SUTV Sports, I'm Bernadette Koff. Both teams will head to Cheney Saturday. Women's starts at 1 and men's at 3. Former athletic director Jane Goss touched many lives here at Chippensburg. The Jane Goss Perseverance Award was presented at last night's basketball game in her honor. She was a great role model in how things should be done the right way and how you should treat people. And um, in terms of our play for K-Day, uh, we named the Jane Goss Perseverance Award uh, in her name because she also battled breast cancer and uh, did it, you know, in, in Jane fashion where uh, nothing got her down and, and she just, uh, again, was a great role model for everyone of how to deal with adversity in your life. The winners of the award included Kate Connard, Peter Gelati, and Julie Osanich. These recipients were selected for triumphing through life's difficulties while continuing to show their support for the university and community. Raiders Wrestling took on the University of Pittsburgh Johnstown Tuesday. Haley Luke has the highlights. Mark Lentz and Colin Ox were honored during senior night on Tuesday in Highgis Fieldhouse. The lone seniors Lentz and Ox wrestled their last match as Raiders on their home mat. 
Ship was up against a tough opponent that night in the third rank, the University of Pittsburgh Johnstown. The Raiders started out slow until a 174 pound match where Ship's Shane Springer pinned UPJ's John Blankenship in 51 seconds, bringing the score to 33 to 6, Pitt Johnstown. Evan Ramos of Shippensburg also had an impressive night with a 5-3 decision over UPJ's Jacob Hart. The Raiders lost on senior night to the Mountain Cats 37-9. For SUTV Sports, the Raiders are back in action tomorrow in their first regular season or their last regular season match at Kutztown. Behind the walls of Henderson Gym, the boxing club members prepare for their annual showcase this Saturday. Darby Sells finds out their focus is more than just winning. Competitors from Lock Haven, Penn State, and Navy join Raiders in the ring for SHIP's annual showcase. This once-a-year event gives the boxers a chance to show SHIP what they're made of. There's a lot of blood, sweat, and tears in this room that we've lost, and, uh, but we actually cherish. And I just would like people to know that and people to witness how hard we work. Tyleek Guilford came to SHIP with no intentions of becoming a boxer, but a track career-ending knee injury changed his perspective. I just felt as though I was too athletic to just be sitting down doing anything, and I felt as though I was capable of doing something. Picking up gloves for the first time his freshman year, Tyleek put his all into a new sport and reached back into his upbringing too. I'm originally from uh, Philadelphia, and growing up it just was uh, kind of rough, some would say, but um, just the natural fighting ability, it, it, it helped me excel faster. Than others. Tyleek relies on boxing as much for mental strength as physical. I can like go 100%, but at the same time, I still have the mental, ca mental capacity to see that, all right, I have to focus on this and focus on that. I, I can get stressed out, and but at the end of the day, I can always just come to the gym and beat up the bag, and I'll be fine the next day. Just three years into the sport, Tyleek has his eye on the biggest prize. I, I'm widely recognized across our division as like one of the top tier boxers at, in my weight class, but um, it's not enough. <laughs> and I'm shooting for national champion this year. The ambition to grow and improve comes from back-to-back -back losses in national qualifying rounds. I feel as though they all recognize me as someone that's very talented, but I feel as though I, f I lost those matches because of myself and my own preparation. With a mind set on nothing but the title, Tyleek has no doubt he'll make it to the top. Well, I always go by uh, prior preparation prevents piss poor performance. So it's, uh, that's, that's how I feel about those two matches. And uh, my preparation and uh, also along with my teammates pushing me, uh, I'll definitely be national champion this year. And if all goes as planned, Tyleek will share the champion spotlight with teammate Brett Pastore competing in a different weight class. For SUTV Sports, I'm Darby Sells. Their first bout starts at 6 in Henderson Gym. Tickets are available at the door. $6 for bleachers and $8 for ringside. That's it for SUTV Sports. Now back to the front desk. That's it for SUTV News. I'm Avery Quinn. And I'm Holly Hare. As usual, don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at SUTV News. And check out our website, SUTVNews.com. We'll see you next time.